Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is Praveen here. I hope you guys are extremely doing good. So as you are aware that we are starting the free bootcamp eight with eight projects from this coming Saturday, that is your 24th August. 2024 from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Every weekend, I'll be coming on YouTube live and will teach various kinds of projects so that you can come to know like what exactly you have to do to crack the interviews in the product-based company. So all the projects will be real time. And also as a part of that learnings itself, I have brought you all today the 300 plus interview questions on DevOps and SRE curated from service and product based companies like Walmart, Amazon, Flipkart, Zynga, and all those companies, right? So let's get started. What do you get in this 300 plus interview questions? So I'll be making you walk through over each and every question. And I have divided this entire documents into tool wise and cloud wise. So stick to the end of this video and make sure that you are focusing on what you are expecting from interviewer to ask you the questions. So why waste time? Let's get started. So quickly, I will share my screen. So first of all, let's see like what exactly the things you have, right? So very important if I first start with this set of questions. So you can see here, so many questions are here and I hope you are able to see. The first 50 questions are curated for beginners and freshers who are looking for a domain change also. So you can see here, what is DevOps? DevOps is a set of practices that combine software development and IT operation to shorten the system's development lifecycle and provide continuous delivery with high software quality. So for every question you see till the end, the answers for all the questions will be with you. So it sounds interesting, right? So let's see like one by one, explain the core principle of DevOps, automation, continuous integration, deployment, collaboration and communication infrastructure, the code monitoring and logging. So most of the things, if you see, how does DevOps improve the software lifecycle or development process? DevOps improves the software development process by fostering collaboration between development operations. What is difference between agile and DevOps? So most of you who are freshers and you don't know what is agile, this is the question for you. What are the benefits of using DevOps? This is a generic question. You can tell like scalability, availability, reliability, deployment frequency, uh, reducing the downtimes, everything. You see this document will cater and foster for your needs. So let's see like first five questions. Very, very simple. I know that. So now you can see what is continuous integration? What is continuous delivery? Describe a typical CI/CD pipeline. So what is a typical CI/CD pipeline, guys? Uh, source stage, build stage, test stage, deploy stage, and monitor stage. What is the purpose of a build server in CI/CD? What are some popular CI/CD tools? Uh, what is Git? How do you use it in the DevOps? Explain the concept of branching and merging strategies. This is a very important question, guys. So you can see here, what is branching allows developers to create a separate copy of code base and to work on new features. Whereas as merging is a process of integrating different branches code together, right? So that's what is a pull request? How do you handle Git conflicts? Very, very important. What is a Git repository? Configuration management. What is configuration management in DevOps? Name some popular configuration management tools. What is Ansible? How does it work? So you can see here the severity of the questions will be like from basics to advanced, as I have told you. And yes, there are 300 plus interview questions. So you have to wait and watch this video till the end. And one more important thing. If you are willing to join the free bootcamp eight that is going to start from 24th August 6 p.m., then the link of the telegram is in the description. You have to hit that link and join there. All right. So if you have seen till the 18 questions, very, very basic questions for freshers and experience. Now from here, the masala things comes into factor. Okay. Containers and orchestrations. What are containers in the con context of DevOps? What is Docker? Explain the role of Kubernetes in DevOps. What is a Docker file? How does Kubernetes handle container scaling? Now, if you see monitoring and logging, the basic questions, why is monitoring important for DevOps? Name some popular monitoring tools used for DevOps. What is Elk Stack? How it is used in DevOps? What is Prometheus? Uh, so basically, if you see this document is making you understand what each tool is doing in two to three lines so that you don't uh, get the fascination of like DevOps is vast. I have to learn everything. No, whatever there in this document, the tool wise questions. If you learn those, that will be your Kickstarter kind of, okay? What is Elk Stack? What is Prometheus? How does alerting work in the monitoring system? And now you can see here, the 32 next questions will be like cloud and infrastructure. What is infrastructure as a code? If you see here, uh, well, explain the difference between public, private and hybrid cloud clouds. And those who are thinking that guys, 
these are very basic questions i already told you till 50 question 50th question it will be very basic then we will jump on to the advanced level of questions okay so wait public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud what is aws what is microsoft azure explain the concept of serverless complete computing what is devsecops explain the concept of shift left in devsecops what is security pipeline name some security tools and these all things are very very much important why is automation important for devops name some common automation tools used for devops what is the role of ci cd in automation Right. If you see here, a CI CD tool automates the process of integrating code changes, running tests, deploying applications, enabling continuous integrations, delivery, reducing manual intervention. So, whatever you have learned till now on terms of CI CD, everything comes into picture. How does the infrastructure as a code automate the infrastructure management? Very important. Infrastructure as a code automates infrastructure management by using code to define and provision infrastructure, enabling consistent and repeatable deployment. So very important. Terraform is very, very much powerful. And Ansible is also very powerful in terms of your infrastructure as a code, which, which helps you to provision your infrastructure to do the deployments and all those things. Oh, what is the difference between continuous integration and continuous deployment? This question. If you give the answer in the comment section without seeing the answer, that is very good because most of the people uh, gets confused. Like what is continuous integration? What is continuous deployment? What are these two? So continuous integration is the term which is used where your GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket or Bamboo, whatever it is connected with your project code repository. And at the same time, whenever a developer pushes, raises a merge request, automatically the pipeline gets started. The pipeline trigger happens, right? And continuous uh, deployment is the factor where your code is automatically deployed onto various kinds of environments, making sure like it's always continuous in flow. What is blue-green deployment? Very important. What are releases, basically canary deployment? What are blue-green deployment? What is Kyos engineering? Very much important. And when uh, I was in Walmart, the Kyos engineering was one of the important aspect of SRE and DevOps. Kyos means something where you introduce your fault tolerance, you check uh, whether the system is uh, withstanding the uh, unexpected failure. So you introduce your, you introduce in the system, good running system, some fault, and you check whether the system is good or not. What is A and B testing in DevOps, right? Now, from here, this is the factor which you all are waiting, right? So advanced DevOps questions, right? What is infrastructure as code? How does it differ from traditional infrastructure management explain the role of terraform and devops what are the benefits of using kubernetes for container organization can you tell me a few without seeing the answer automated deployment and scaling self failing service discovery and load balancing resource management all these things the kubernetes does describe a scenario where you would use helm in a kubernetes environment very important guys why do we use helm that is a very basic question right what what is the use of Helm, uh, why we are using Helm and all those things are also plays an important role. So you can see here, the answer is here. What is service mesh? Okay, now this is also a tricky question. What is service mesh and why it is important in a microservice architecture? You have to tell me now. Without seeing the answer, you have to tell me service mesh, load balancers, controllers, uh, Istio controllers in Kubernetes will help you, your application to make sure that they are handling the traffic. Millions and millions of traffic is handled and routed to the proper destination. So you can see service to service communication improves observability and security simplifies traffic management. So these all things are very much important. Now more on CI CD. Let's talk about your CI CD. CI CD, everyone is behind CI CD. What is the purpose of a staging environment in a CI CD pipeline? Explain the concept of artifact repository in CI CD. How do you ensure the security of the CI CD pipeline is important? What is the rollback strategy? How do you implement in a CI CD pipeline? Very important, right? This one. This one uh, question is very much important. How do you handle database migrations in a CI CD pipeline? And then you have some advanced Git questions. How do you use Git tags? What are they used for? So tags are basically, see, whenever you go to the market and you, you buy a product, on the product you will have a tag. What is the MRP, when it was manufactured, when it is going to expire, who has manufactured it from where the product came into this store. All those details will be there, right? So similarly, Git gives a tagging concept for every branch and it tells like who has created when it was pushed. So entire code will have a tag basically to make sure that uh, to differentiate between various kinds of uh, various kinds of scenarios and you can see here git tag tag name if you give and git push origin the tag will be pushed to the github repository okay what is git rebase and how it is different from git merge git rebase is a command that allows you to move or combine sequence of commits on a new base commit so basically uh, rebase is something every commit is transferred to a new commit id okay whereas git merge all the commit history from the old branches attached to the new uh, new Git commit, okay? Uh, new Git branch, basically. How do you resolve Git conflicts? Very, very much important. Now, this 
you have to tell in the interview these steps you have to tell in the interview which is going to give you some add on marks what are git sub modules how they are used explain the concept of git hooks and provide an example advanced ci cd strategy what is the deployment pipeline how it is differ from a ci cd pipeline you can see here how do you implement feature toggles in ci cd pipeline very very much important what is trunk based deployment how do you does uh, it benefit in ci cd how do you implement spoke test in ci cd because in Walmart, we have used all kinds of testing, smoke testing, regression, progression, unit testing, okay, with in terms of your CI CD pipelines. What is mono repo? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Monitoring and observability. From 70th question, if you see, what is observability? How does it differ from monitoring? How do you implement a distributed tracing in a microservice architecture? If you have not seen my uh, Kubernetes Istio Kiali Jager uh, project, you can see here uh, in the playlist I have given and all the free projects are also in the links you can check down in the description and uh, if you see here how do you implement distributed tracing uh, instrument services uh, pro, uh, propagate trace context collect and store traces so basically tracing in something like this is one microservice this is second microservice and you are trying to hit www.a.com www.a.com has to reach to www.ab.com now the time taken to travel this request from the pod a to pod b all right. What is the response time? What is the drops in the packets? How much the packets have been uh, transferred from point A to point B? These all things comes under your tracing. Okay. Now, what are the benefits of synthetic monitoring? This is also one of the important aspects. Like we have various kinds of things in monitoring. Synthetic monitoring, real user monitoring, like RUM, we call it. Site reliability engineering, which is, again, uh, the typical, uh, you can have all the monitoring things. Right. How do you integrate? Uh, Security testing in a CICD pipeline. What is threat modeling? What is the importance of DevSecOps? How do you manage secrets in DevOps environment? This is a very important question, question number 78. So secrets are managed with the help of secret management. If you are using AWS, you can use AWS Secret Manager, Azure, Azure Key Vault, or you are using Ansible, Ansible Vault also you can use. So that's what it is telling, encryption, encrypting, decrypting, all the things. Explain the concept of least privilege and its importance in DevSecOps. How do you perform a security audit? Now from here, it's a cloud term. Uh, what is VPC? Virtual private cloud in any cloud environment. Explain the concept of serverless architecture. What is cloud native application? How do you implement? Okay, okay. How do you implement disaster recovery? Can you tell me? Data backup, replication, automated failover testing, and documentation. These all things are major factors for your DR implementation. And sometimes, as I have told you, the Kios engineering, Kios engineering also plays an important role in checking how the DR activity happens properly. They introduce fault purposefully and the entire traffic has to shift from the uh, point number A to point number B. That is how your disaster recovery uh, plays an important role. Uh, more on monitoring and logging. You can see here so many questions. How do you implement log rotation and retention policies? What is the purpose of service level agreement? Uh, how do you use Grafana for visualizing metrics? Uh, explain the concept of synthetic transactions. How do you implement end-to-end -end monitoring services for end? Uh, microservice architecture. Container orchestration, more advanced things. If you see what is the difference between Docker container and a VM, very important, right? How do you deploy multi-container application using Docker? Docker, You have to use Docker Compose, right? So one Docker file for one container. Let's say like I have a Docker file. This is giving me a one container. But if I want to spin up multiple containers, I have to use Docker Compose, right? Point A, point B, point C, point A, uh, point A is the main container, point B, point C are the sub-containers or three are different containers. So use Docker Compose to create multiple containers, right? Now, if you see what are, okay, I think, yeah. So if you see here, uh, what are Kubernetes pods? How do you define uh, that they are different from containers? How do you perform rolling updates in Kubernetes? Very, very much important if you see kubectl apply, kubectl rollout status, kubectl rollout undo if you want to roll back the things. What is Helm? How does it simplifies the deployments? Automation and scripting. How do you use Ansible for configuration management? Right, you have to tell this. Explain the concept of item potency in configuration management. What is a Jenkins pipeline? How do you create one? How do you use Terraform for the infrastructure provisioning? Now, if you see in Terraform, there are basically .tf files and the three commands you have to remember is Terraform init, Terraform plan and Terraform apply. The one-stop solution video for you, which can help you to scale your knowledge from zero to hundred. Okay, you don't need to go anywhere. These are very important questions, by the way, right? Uh, so how do you implement blue-green deployments in Kubernetes? Can you tell? Okay, don't see this. Can you tell me how do you implement uh, blue-green deployments in Kubernetes? How do you do that? Can you tell me? Quickly, can you tell me? 
without seeing this can you tell me no right so that is why these questions are important for you what is the purpose of candidate deployment explain the infrastructure immutability how do you use chef configuration what is service mesh how do you implement how do you use prometheus for monitoring what is the role of grafana how do you use ci cd and if you see what is the purpose of build artifactory what is the difference between blue green and canary deployments how do you manage secrets in a containerized environment how do you do that this is the answer what is the role of reverse proxy in microservice architecture how do you use elk stack explain the concept of infrastructure as a code right now how do you perform continuous integration with gitlab ci now gitlab ci is one of the important uh, aspect of coding in whereas on i was completely uh, using gitlab ci pipelines only so in that we used to have dot gitlab hyphen ci dot yaml in this this is basically the simple format of Jenkins.yaml and uh, uh, how you write the Jenkins. Uh, sorry, not Jenkins.yaml. So in the Jenkins file, how do you write the steps, right? Uh, pipeline, agent, any uh, stages, steps, right? And then scripts, you write all those things. Similarly, the GitLab CI YAML file will be like that where it has various kinds of uh, code with it, right? And different kinds of stages. And we, uh, if you see in the Jenkins, we have build agents. Here you call it runner. So similarly, uh, all the propagation remains the same, okay? How do you use cloud formation for infrastructure provisioning? What is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous communication uh, in microservices? How do you use Spinnaker for continuous delivery? Uh, what is the difference between horizontal and vertical scaling? Very important. How do you use Istio for traffic management? Very important. So you can see here. So basically in Kubernetes, what is happening is you have something called sidecars. Now don't think like it's a car. So basically what happens, right? Whenever you create your Kubernetes container, let's say like I am deploying the Nginx pod into this, okay? This is my container, okay? Now what is happening is, suppose for my container to be up and running or for my container to have additional security, for my container, it is dependent on some other factors. I create a sidecar and attach to it. So you can see here, uh, configure sidecar proxies, define uh, network uh, traffic policies, monitor traffic. So basically sidecar is very much important. It's kind of, a, you can say like a attachment, mother and child attachment, okay? What is the purpose of readiness probe to check your uh, pod is up and uh, up or not, right? Right. And uh, how do you open shift? Okay. What is the role of service accounts in Kubernetes? Very important. Right. How do you use Ansible fault? Uh, this is very good question, by the way. Right. You can check here. What is the purpose of namespace in Kubernetes? Oh, we are, we are here till 136 and still there are many, many questions for you. So I will just go. And as you can see, you have to pause at every page. You have to check. You have to make sure that you understand the question and write down in your notebook. Very important questions. As you are going 137, 150, 200, this questions, the amount of questions you are able to watch on the screen will be going ahead. How do you implement CICD for monolithic application? What is persistent volumes in Kubernetes and how it is used? Very much important. How do you use Jenkins Blue Green Diploma? What is the purpose of stateful sets in Kubernetes? A stateful set in Kubernetes is to manage stateful applications. Now, before you answer this, what is stateful and stateless? Stateful application is kind of an application which stores the data with it. Kind of, you can say like a database, right? Or you can see here, uh, manage stateful application uh, they, that requires stable network identities. Stateful sets ensure that each pod has a unique stable identity and maintain its state across rescheduling and they commonly use for applications like databases. That's what I told you. Stateful, stateful means Plateful, you can consider like data is fully loaded on this system, right? How do you use AWS Lambda for serverless computing? One of the good question. Now, similarly, what is help chart? How do you use? How do you use Google Cloud for CI/CD build? Uh, how do you implement GitOps for continuous delivery? What is the difference between daemon set and deployment? One of again, one of the important question. One of the important questions, guys. Again. Okay, how do you use Google Cloud for build CI/CD? Uh, how do you use AWS Code Pipeline? Okay, uh, how do you use Jenkins for multi-branch pipeline? What is the difference between pod and replica set? These all things are very much important, guys. Okay, uh, how do you use Terraform for multi-cloud deployments? Right, define providers, write infrastructure code, initialize Terraform, plan and apply changes, manage infrastructure. Right, what is the difference between config map and secret in Kubernetes? Right. How do you implement a CI/CD pipeline for microservice architecture? And uh, what is the purpose of persistent volume claim in Kubernetes? How do you use Jenkins for de declarative pipelines? Uh, what is the difference between ingress and load balancer in Kubernetes? Again, an ingress in Kubernetes is an API object that manages external access to the service within a cluster. 
uh, typically HTTP and HTTPS traffic. It features load balancing, SSL termination, and path-based routing. So basically, you can see ingress, right, uh, is kind of a load balancer itself. It's doing all the things. A load balancer, on the other hand, creates an external load balance that routes the traffic to the service, typically TCP and UDP level. So basically, uh, if you see uh, in Kubernetes, little bit difference is that uh, the ingress has the SSL termination ability and HTTP and HTTPS. Mostly, if you see like two-way communication systems are handled by this, okay? How do you use uh, AWS Cloud Formation for your automation? Guys, so much questions. So much questions for you, right? So what you have to do? So basically, watch the complete video, right? What you have understood with your learnings. Make sure that you are uh, able to uh, pacify all the things. Write down in your notebook whichever questions you know, whichever, sorry, whichever questions you don't know because... At the end, yeah, learning is important, right? Failure is not important according to me. Learning is important because the more you learn, the more you uh, scale your knowledge, the more you enhance your knowledge. And at the same time, you will be able to understand that your failure se hi learning hoti hai, hai? So I cracked 30 plus companies. I failed in maybe more than that companies, right? But it has made me understand like all the interview questions, even though you know the confidence and the ability to speak plays an important role. You have to be very confident. Matlab, share jaisa lagna hai ki yaar. Yes, tell me. You give me any question, I am able to tell that answer. Yaar. It's very simple. I am here to tell you the answer about that. Right? That's what the confidence you have to enlighten when you are sitting in the interview. You should have a smile, get ready, spray some scent. With that smell, you will get confidence, sit in the interview, have a good internet connection. Make sure that you are roaring, roaring on that day. So almost all 200 questions we have touched. I will quickly... Uh, go over uh, next of the questions. If you see, few of the questions will be repetitive, repetitive, but don't worry. That is only for your understanding. Ki yaar, hai? Idhar udhar hai questions. Hai? So you can see here almost 212, 220, 223, 230, right? And most of the questions are same. So I'm just going ahead, uh, uh, making sure that you are understanding uh, what is the difference. So yeah. Yeah. So what is the difference between declarative and imperative syntax and Kubernetes? Very important. So see, questions are repeating, but few of the new questions have also been introduced in this. 253, right? 260, 267, okay? Uh, and uh, you can see here 273, 279, 280, 286, 294. And I'll be talking about one question, which is very much important for you. Let's see which one we can select. I think this is the important question. How do you perform rolling updates in Kubernetes? To perform rolling updates in Kubernetes, modify the deployment configuration to specify the new version of the application. Okay. Uh, kubectl apply, use this command to apply the changes. Uh, first, you have to do it here, kubectl edit deployment. Okay. So you have to do kubectl edit deployment. In that, there will be a version tag. You have to change that version to 1.2.1, 1.2.3, something like this. And you have to move forward, then apply. Right. And uh, if anything issues comes, kubectl rollout status, kubectl rollout undo also, you can do it. Right. I hope you have liked this video. Right. So much power, so much josh, so much energy have been put in. If you have liked the video, like target, make sure that at least you are 100 likes. Kar do, agar aapko pasand aaya to. And uh, also comment in the comment section whether you need this kind of uh, interview questions because I am planning to share as much as possible whatever the data points I get. It's good to share it right with you all so that at least one, two persons, if they are able to understand what, what, what we are doing exactly, why we are here, that is my day, right? So thank you all for joining this uh, video, watching me till here. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and share the link with your friends. That's all for today's video. This is Singham signing off. Yeah, bye.